Hello and welcome to another ARC tutorial. Today's video is about growing your PvP skills and mindset. These tips are designed to give solo players and tribes a huge edge when it comes to PvP combat, raids, and base defense. Before we get into that though, did you know that 90% of people that watch my videos aren't subscribed? Imagine where we'd be if 90% of you hit that subscribe button. It's totally free and helps me a lot. Like, so much. Anyway, let's get into the video. So everyone that plays ARK is going to have a base. It might not be lavish or huge, but there will always be a base. There are some things you can do to make it incredibly difficult and annoying to raid your base, as well as buy you time, which will help you immensely. I'm talking about the honeycomb structure. What is the honeycomb structure, you ask? Honestly, it's a bit like trolling your enemies because you're essentially leading them to false doorways. Let's take a look here. We have a pretty big base that looks like it's going to have a ton of loot. I'll be honest, it does have a ton of loot, but nothing really looks special about it and it appears to be a pretty easy target to raid. So an enemy tribe starts soaking the turrets and is able to place some C4 at your doorstep. They blow the door only to be greeted with several turrets, traps, and another door. <laughs> Imagine how the raider must feel at this point. Definitely a bit disappointed, no doubt. It doesn't stop there folks, let's do that again. The raider soaks your first inner layer of turrets, manages to put more C4 down, and blows the next door. What are they greeted with? You guessed it. More turrets, more traps, and another door. The raider has to be thinking, wow, this guy's an asshole. This design will truly make people think twice about blowing that next door. What's nice about this honeycomb structure is that if someone is persistent enough to try and push through this base, they might try to avoid the next door and go around. The beauty of this design is that no matter where the raider tries to go, there are turrets and traps waiting for them. This could potentially buy you hours if the raider isn't prepared to handle all this. If you're offline, those hours could save your base. The key to this design is having multiple generators powering several turrets. If a raider decides to destroy your generators, then your honeycomb design just got a lot weaker. You could even go so far as to put decoy generators around to mind game the raider. All of these things will help save your base. Speaking of saving your base, the next tip I have for you is about online raids. Let's say while someone is trying to raid this honeycomb base, you're online and they end up killing you. You should have a few mini bases nearby that you can spawn in that have loads of PvP gear so you can properly fight back against the person inside your base. This has all sorts of advantages, particularly if you use the honeycomb design on these mini bases as well. Having three or four of these mini bases nearby will potentially save you from a raid, and at the very least, it's going to greatly increase the time it takes for the enemy tribe to get inside and take your stuff. I always like to have the same type of gear in each of the mini bases so that no matter which one you spawn in, you have a fighting chance. This won't really help you if the enemy tribe decides to destroy these structures first, but if you have them designed the way we've been talking about, they might not think it's worth it and head for the main base. When it comes to PvP, mind games are totally an option. When I have mini bases, I keep a cryo fridge with a couple good dinos in them, so when I do return to my base, I can show the raiders that I mean business. It might make them flee, it might make them fight harder, but in the end, no matter the outcome, it'll buy you valuable time. The next tip I have for you is about shoulder-mounted dinos. Some shoulder-mounted dinos will give you the edge you're looking for during PvP situations that occur while you're traveling or are away from your base. There are several shoulder-mounted dinos you can choose from, but we'll talk briefly about the three that I recommend for your daily use. The first one I want to talk about is the Demorphodon. The Demorphodon is a pretty easy creature to tame and will help you with some minor PvP encounters. You can set it to attack your target and it'll do just that. I recommend the Demorphodon because of its small hitbox and you can use it as a distraction that the enemy could ignore and die from or get fixated on and allow you to come in for the kill. The next shoulder mount I recommend is the Mesopithecus. I'm gonna be honest with you, this guy isn't a fighter. The best thing about the Mesopithecus is that it can fling poop at enemies during combat which will slow them down and poison them, giving you an opportunity to either push the attack or flee. They can also unlock thatch and wood doors if they're thrown into a window, but it's really rare you'll find this ability useful. So the last shoulder mount I want to talk about is easily my favorite and the one I recommend you get and use all the time. The Micro Raptor. If you've ever encountered a Micro Raptor in the wild, you know that these things can be incredibly annoying. 
They essentially eject you from your mount and stun you, which can ultimately lead to your death, and that's just in the wild. Imagine if you had one of these things in a PvP fight. You could just set it to attack your target, and off it goes, fucking shit up, making your life a lot easier. Micro Raptor is perfect to defend against the people that patrol the map just to look for people to kill. Their stun seemingly lasts forever, and it can be a super great way to get a sneaky kill or run for your life. Alright, so moving on to tip number four, we have a really simple one, parachutes. You might be thinking that this isn't very advanced, but I assure you the way in which I recommend you use the parachute is highly advanced. You know how people come around, pick you up on a flyer, fly super high, and just like drop you? That fall is probably the most depressing 10 to 15 seconds in arc layer experiences. So I recommend keeping parachutes on your hop art to prevent a death in this way. We've been talking about mind games a lot, and this is a really great way to get inside the head of enemies. I don't think there's any ARC player that picks people up and drops them from the sky that's expecting you to survive, and when you do, they'll think twice about picking you up again. Not only are parachutes really useful when it comes to PvP situations, but it's also nice to be able to jump off a cliff when a big dino is in your face trying to kill you. Parachutes are incredibly useful and can give you a somewhat hilarious edge during PvP and PvE situations. I live for moments like these in ARC. So the next tip is geared mostly towards solo players since they have to be like 10 times more cautious than other players, but this tip will help anyone that plays the game. When you're traveling or building or doing anything in the game, you have to think about what kind of situations you could end up in, and how to get yourself out of those situations before they even occur. For example, if you're trying to gather some crystal but you see a rex or a wyvern nearby, it's important to recognize those dangers and formulate an escape plan. Typically you'll have a dino with you during these times, but wyverns and rexes can quickly overwhelm a player and his or her dino. Additionally, people can be hidden all over the place just waiting for you to drop your guard to begin an attack. It's always smart to stay cautious, stay aware, and have that escape plan ready. Because if you don't, there's a good chance you and your dino will die, and you'll have to make another trip out to collect those resources. Arc PvP is about as ruthless as it gets. People don't even care that you've sunk 500 hours into this server, they just want your loot, and they'll get it if you let them. The next tip I have for you today is in regards to your character size. A lot of people either make this giant, hideous monstrosity with a massive hitbox, or just stick to the default character that also has a pretty large hitbox. I recommend you take the time to shrink your character down into something as small as possible. The smaller your character is, the harder it is to hit and the harder it is to see. This gives you an advantage when you're living your best life on the arc, since there are a lot of new players coming into the game that'll be easy targets for experienced players, as well as keep you hidden from those new players. Keeping your character small won't give you massive advantages over experienced players, but any advantage in arcs PvP is a good one. This small hitbox paired with some beer is an outstanding way to resist a lot of damage the enemy can lay down on you when they do eventually hit you. The last tip I have for you is about the obelisks. If you didn't know, the obelisk allows you to upload items, dinos, and your character to the server within ARC. Essentially, this means that you can keep your items and dinos safe while you're out doing other things or when you're about to log off. This is a super smart way to keep your progress. I mainly use this feature to upload dinos, but if you find that you're losing good gear a lot, it might be beneficial to keep these items in an obelisk for a short time. I usually upload dinos that I'm not using frequently, like the Ankylosaurus and Dodicarus. This guarantees me that my dinos will be there when I need them, as long as I pull them out of the server before 24 hours passes, or else they'll be deleted forever. This is an excellent tip for those that have just gotten wiped and need to start over. I understand that many of you won't have problems starting again after being wiped, but either way, the obelisks will help you tremendously. You can also use loot drops the same way as an obelisk. They have the same functionality, they just disappear quickly and have some bonus loot. Understand that you can get your belongings that you've already uploaded from any loot drop or obelisk. For example, if you put an Anki in the red obelisk and are at a yellow loot drop, you can pull that Anki out of the loot drop if you need it. Super useful if you need access to the server in a pinch. Be careful on Aberration though because it's a difficult map to get off of or upload dinos to because the harsh terrain and sparsity of loot drops make them few and far between. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more of these juicy tips I'll be dropping in the future. I want to let you know I stream ARC every Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 8pm Central Time with some variety content on Sundays and Tuesdays. Links for that are in the description. 
as always, thank you so much for your time today. We'll see you in the next video.